wait, don't tell me that the practice nail is going to turn out better than anything I've ever done on my actual nails. Hello! I just received the new Summer Krems collection from China Glaze in the mail, and I'm going to be attempting to do a water marble design using all six of these polishes on my dominant hand, so let's get into it. Immediately, I think I made a mistake. I started by applying a base coat using the lightest polish from this collection, which is called Berry Yummy. I got my nail techniques confused here though, because I think this look would have turned out even better than it did if I had used a white base instead. I'll be showing you clips of 5 different experiments I ran using a white base polish and different polish combos at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that, but as for now, I'll continue on with my yellow based mani. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is applying liquid latex, that's that pink stuff, all around my nail. Water marbles are super freaking messy, and I do not want to have to clean up any more polish than I absolutely have to. Something I do for water marbles that I don't do for any other nail techniques is covering the underside of my nail with liquid latex in addition to the top, as I don't want to have to clean polish out of the underside of my nail. Now that my nails are prepped, I started dropping polish in the water. For this mani, I am using all six of the new creme polishes from China Glaze's What's the Scoop Summer Collection. These polishes water marble pretty well because they are on the thinner side, also because they are cremes as opposed to another polish formula, but that thinner formula did pose one issue though. The yellow and orange polishes in particular became kind of hard to differentiate in the water marble design. I'll show you an even more drastic example later in the experimental part of this video, but at one point the orange polish looked exactly like the yellow. I don't know what was going on there, but that is just something to keep in mind. So I already covered my tips and tricks for water marbling in my Hala Taco Barista video, but I'll go over some basic ones as well right now. Some crucial things to keep in mind when attempting a water marble are the polish formulas and the water temperature. Firstly, you want to make sure that you are using a polish formula that is conducive to water marbling and that you aren't mixing formulas unless they are all alright for water marbling. In my experience, lighter formulas like cremes or linear holographic polishes make the best for an easy and low stress water marble. So if you want to do a creme and linear holographic water marble, that could work. I have done that before myself and had no issues. You just don't want to mix polishes that don't work together, so you don't want to mix cremes and chunky glitters together, or linear holographics and frosted metals, because that is just a mess waiting to happen. The reason polishes like frosted metals or chunky glitters don't do well in water marbles is because of the jelly bases that many of these polishes have. The same issue arises if you try to do a sponge gradient with a frosted metal polish. The sponge will soak up the jelly base and leave only the metal flakes behind. The water in your cup will allow the jelly base to freely disperse, and then all of these special effects additives like glitter or metal flakes will not get evenly dispersed, thus ruining the intended effect of your water marble. The other factor that is crucial to keep in mind when you are water marbling is the temperature of your water. I've always followed the idea that room temperature water is best. I think it has to do with your polishes also being room temperature and just being the best condition for the polishes to drop and disperse into. Side note, but this is also a helpful polish temperature fact, during colder months, if you get nail polish delivered to you in the mail, it is advised by most nail polish brands to not open your nail polish until it has had time to acclimate to your home's temperature. This is because your polish delivery is going to be super cold from being shipped all over to get to you, and then the sudden change in temperature from being brought inside is potentially harmful for the polish. I've heard that if you open up cold polish right away, it might get gloopy, thick, or have some other formula issues occur because of the sudden temperature change. That is just something to keep in mind though, so do with that information what you will. Back to what I was saying about room temperature water though, what I typically will do is prepare some water beforehand. I like to have at least two cups of water on standby for my water marbling session. Since I always am doing all kinds of nail art looks, I know in my head and on my calendar ahead of time when I want to be doing a water marble. And so on the day of, I will prepare some cups of water beforehand. I just use tap water and these little plastic cups I got from Dollar Tree. These ones are great for water marbling, but they are kind of weird in that they come with little bits of plastic on the bottom, which make them wobble and not stand up correctly. Like, 
what's with that? The whole point of a cup is to stand up correctly and hold liquid, but whatever. I actually just shaved off the plastic bits with an old emery board, and they were good as new. Anyways, back once again to the nail art. Here is one of the best and most satisfying parts of the water marble, taking off the liquid latex. I have a love-hate relationship with this particular liquid latex I use. It applies really easily, and it dries pretty quick, and it usually peels off quite easily. Okay, wow, that's actually a lot of reasons to love it. Well, the one thing I hate about it though, which honestly might just be like a universal thing with liquid latex, is that it dries the heck out of my skin upon removal. But really, I guess that's not that big of a deal because I can just apply cuticle oil or lotion to rejuvenate my skin. Okay, so it's more of like a love 80% of the time, hate 20% of the time situation. But I guess that is just something to keep in mind. The liquid latex I've been using for like the past two years at least is from a brand called Polished and Pretty by MBA. I used to be on their PR list for like a year, and that's when I got my liquid latex from them, so it has impressively lasted a really long time for me. Okay, now that I've rambled on for a really long time, and I've shown you just raw footage of me peeling off liquid latex, let me speed up this last bit for you. Holy cow, I'm so sorry, that was a little bit miserable to watch for me as that was in normal time. Even sped up 10 times the speed was a little boring, but that was just me showing you all like the realistic liquid latex removal process, which I'm sure you all care about deeply. Okay, now I'm just applying a glossy top coat after cleaning up any remaining polish with my cleanup brush dipped in 100% acetone. I'm using the Eco Glaze top coat from China Glaze to stay on brand. I heard a lot of hype about this top coat when it launched, and honestly, I enjoy it myself as well. Of course, I still cannot escape the issue of polish shrinking, regardless of the top coat I'm using, but this one applies nicely and it dries relatively fast, even though I don't believe it's marketed as a fast dry top coat, but it's a surprisingly decent top coat anyways, so I approve. Now we are finally onto the experimental stage of this video. Remember in the beginning when I said I wanted to try using these polishes to water marble on top of a white base? Well, let me show you how they will turn out. First, I tried my favorite color combination of the bunch, blue and pink. This always reminds me of cotton candy, although it isn't pastel blue and pink like traditional cotton candy, so I was very excited to see how this combo would look as a water marble. Once again, I'm just gonna speed this footage up a little bit because you don't have all day, you have things to do, and you don't want to spend all day just watching me drip nail polish into a cup. I have really been enjoying doing this type of pattern in my water marbles for a while now. I like to drag inwards from the outer rings of the water marble and then go all the way into the center and then pull up. I try to also make sure to connect the little polish pulls in the center. What you don't see off screen though is me holding a balled up tissue ready to wipe off my toothpick on between every single polish drag. This is also another important thing to keep in mind when you're doing a water marble. Always clean off your tool in between pulls. It helps clean off excess polish stuck to your toothpick and ensures a nice smooth polish pull. And also make sure that you don't accidentally get polish that's stuck on your toothpick stuck in the design, if that makes sense. After using the toothpick to form the pattern, Usually the polish all blends together on the toothpick and makes a muddy color, and you don't want to accidentally introduce that muddy mess of a color into your pretty water marble. Surprisingly enough, I don't have any swatch sticks, so I just stuck a practice nail onto a toothpick using a little bit of moldable eraser. I know this is not the most effective or efficient way to do this at all, but I was impatient and I really wanted to see how these water marble color combinations would look. So I just couldn't wait to try it out and this was the easiest thing to put together for a makeshift method of dipping the nails. I really need to get better at syncing these voiceovers to the clips because we just completely ignored that stunning blue and pink water marble. So give me a sec, I'm bringing that footage back. Sorry, that just had to be done. Anyways, here's the next combo. I did yellow and pink for this one. I was going for like a banana split vibe, but oh my god, yikes. Where did the pattern go? I know water marbles offer the chance to make literally so many kinds of patterns in the polish, but I personally really prefer the ones like the blue and pink pattern with like the consistent swirls in them. 
so this one was not really doing it for me, unfortunately. I'm sorry, pink and yellow. Okay, so now it's on to the third combo, and it's giving Halloween. We are doing orange and green for some subtle spooky vibes. Now hear me out, does this remind anyone else of caramel apple pops? Oh shoot, now I really want a caramel apple. I love them and just anything and everything fall. Jeez, look at me, it's not even summer yet and I'm already hyped for fall. Fall is the best season though. I saw a post somewhere recently being like, what other season gets a nickname? Because like, that's a top tier season. Autumn if you're being fancy or fall if you're feeling silly goofy. This polish combo turned out cute but a little too subtle for my taste. Like I said, I think the orange and green polish just kind of lack the opacity when dispersed in the water to provide a really nice and vibrant water marble. Here's our penultimate polish combo test. We're doing pink and green. Cosmo and Wanda ain't slick. I love this color combo. Because red and green are opposites on the color wheel and pink is so close to red, I just think that the pink and green combo looks really good together. It also reminds me of the costumes in the Disney Channel Zombies movies. Speaking of those movies, last year I randomly spent like two days doing a nail art design of the Zombies logo, and then I literally never posted it or edited the footage of the tutorial. It just sits on my phone haunting me. It feels too late and not at all culturally relevant to post now, but also I don't want to just delete days worth of effort and work, you know? I don't know what to do about that long lost nail art. Anyways, here's the final combo, blue and yellow. This also was a really good color combo, though it ran the risk of turning green. At first, this combo reminded me of the Ravenclaw colors from Harry Potter, but honestly now it reminds me of a different and definitely less well-known color scheme, which is the color scheme of the University of Rochester. It's a college in New York, but they have a very nice royal blue and golden yellow color scheme going on, which I appreciate and which this water marble kind of reminded me of. Here are all five of the experimental practice nail water marble polish combos when using a white base. I think that the white base is the way to go, honestly. The colors look a lot more vibrant and pretty here. As we discovered, some of the less opaque ones had issues even with the white base when having all their colors show up after being dispersed in the water which is why I once again think that the white base is the best way to go. Even though I don't love the potential for shrinkage and the base showing through if the top coat interferes with your design, I think that the risk is worth it for that color payout. So that has been my water marbling experience and experimenting with these new China Glaze Summer 2023 polishes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something new or learned some tips and tricks from it. But regardless, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!